Paul McCartney is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as one of the Beatles. He's also in for his solo career. What right. about Wings? Yeah. What yeah. about Wings? Absolutely. The yeah. band Wings and band every wings. single member that were on their records needs to be inducted either posthumously or brought up on stage. You know, it. De we just lost Denny Lane. Here's how important Denny Lane was. If it wasn't for Denny Lane, I wouldn't be asking for Wings to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because it would have just been Paul McCartney's solo career. Denny Lane co-wrote a whole lot of those songs. Uh, just one of the songs he co-wrote was Mull of Kintyre. He wrote most of it. Paul just wrote the part, Mull of Kintyre. That's his part. <laughs> Denny wrote, Long have I traveled. You know, that, yeah. you, you know, the bulk of the song was Denny Lane's. Take a look at who wrote it today, Paul McCartney. Why? Because he bought Denny Lane's portion of it and chose to continue to say he wrote it. Yeah. Yeah, I love Paul. You know, I've already mentioned how much I love Paul. That's a chintzy move. Yeah, it is. You should have yeah. kept his name on it and then you get all the money. I understand yeah. it's a business deal, right. you know, right. but put Denny's name back on it because Denny was that important to that band. And that's why Wings, not because it's Paul McCartney's band, but because it's Wings, you know, and uh, kudos go to Linda because any band that has Linda, Denny or Paul is Wings, man. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of which, how can an artist, I don't care how big an ego you have, do that to another artist? You yeah. own it. So what? You're getting paid for it. So what? You're going right. to you're going to erase an artist's name. That's mm -hmm. basically what he's doing. I, yeah. That yeah. that's unconscionable. And anytime I've heard Paul talk about the story, uh, he's very vague about who oh, wrote he, it and yeah, stuff. He, my uh my information comes from an interview from Denny Lane. Okay? On how that song is broke down. It shows yeah. the insecurities of, of a huge star. How can you think, how can you be so insecure? But then again, there's so little we really know about so many artists. I mean, who knew, yeah. uh, what's his name was going to, right? You don't yeah. know these people, yeah. no matter how much they are in public, we don't really know them. Right, right. Yeah. Well, and That's Royce true. and I were talking before we got on air tonight, you know, everybody gets and gets off the toilet. Yep. Okay. These are just other people that have to take up four or five times a day. And as they get older, many more times. Yeah. Right? But not, no, they, they put their shoes on, you know, one at a Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Right. You know, just, just like us. And uh, actually, I think, Nick, it would have uh, spoke uh, historically even more of Paul's genius if Absolutely. it just was brought up that way. Because yep. think about it. Paul McCartney, one of his most major uh, contribu uh, contributions to a song was A Day in the Life. Just a small segment of it, but it wasn't a full song until Paul entered the picture. It needed that, and Mull of Kintyre is this beautiful story, but how one, only Paul McCartney could come up with Mall of Kent, the whole simplicity, what a wonderful melody. He would have looked even better yep. if he, see what I can do to a song, guys? Number one in England and held the record for what, two decades? Yeah. As the biggest selling number one in England of all time. Wow. You know? Yeah, Denny Lane, man. So they need to be put into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know? There's, there's uh, one actually, actually, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame needs to be pelted with rocks and right. <laughs> reduce the rubble. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, I've well, currently got a, uh, a tour, uh, a poll going on my channel, Nick. And the last time I looked was earlier today. 75% uh, of my people, and this is, uh, I think uh, it's about 750 people have responded to it so far. Uh, would agree with you. See, I think it needs. Um, I think it needs. It needs an, an over. It needs an. Thank you, an thank overall. you, Chris. 
And here's how I would do it. LL Killjoy will be immediately removed. Missy Elliott will be immediately removed. So will Dolly Parton. So will Willie Nelson. Two of those people I'm actually fans of. Yeah. Okay. All all infractions shall be corrected. The board will no longer have, as part of its nominating committee, rap magazine publishers. Okay. Anybody that doesn't have anything to do with rock and roll just lost your f***ing job. All right. And then we're going to correct some stuff. And for every artist we remove, in comes Foreigner and many other bands. How about Jethro Tull? Jethro Tull's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Are you kidding me? No, I don't don't get that at all. King Crimson isn't in the Rock and Hall of Fame. Are you kidding? Well, we'll just take Missy out and put King Crimson right on in there, baby. Okay, take it back. Don't destroy it. Paul McCartney, I think, is making nicey nice with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for that Wings nomination, and here's why I think so. Paul McCartney hates Jan Winter. If you don't think Paul McCartney doesn't hate Jan Winter, uh, just take a look at the fact that Jan Winter is the one that put a kibosh when Ram first came out. Paul's very best album, by the way. Right. When Ram first, as good as any Beatle album, by the way, uh, first came out, they were going to give it a good review. And Jan Winter, being good buddies and his nose firmly planted up, uh, John Lennon's ass so much. Phil Spector and uh, this man, you know, and Alan Klein were so f-ing destructive to the Beatles that they would have imploded if the Beatles weren't ready to implode themselves. Right. All right. He is an enemy to the state of rock and roll. I want a wanted poster on that man immediately. But anyway, (laughs) he is. He put the kibosh on that. And instead, and I remember reading it because I purchased Rolling Stone. What? They did? No. And all the people at school were talking about how McCartney's just a lot. You know, he's just lightweight, man. Now, three, four decades later, those same idiots are now saying what a wonderful album it was. I knew it was an, a wonderful album the day it came out. I didn't right, need people. Right, right. I knew the McCartney album was a genius album way before the idiots in the 90s started going, you know, that McCartney album, that's the first lo-fi album, man. And then everybody, oh, I love the McCartney album. Oh, it's so wonderful. Oh, I was there, man. I saw it. I know what people were saying. You know, just like everybody loved John Lennon's, you know, double fantasy. Oh, it's so wonderful. Well, then why in the hell weren't you buying it?